In the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most compassionate, I'm Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Audio visible message to your eyes and minds. My tutorial today is a geological evaluation in periods. This tutorial is longer than the previous tutorials as it is in one unit. So keep watching. Let's move on. Audiological evaluation in pediatrics has two main groups, behavioral and objective. The objective one, if you are an autoacoustic emission, the behavior, behavioral observation audiometry, visual reinforcement audiometry, play audiometry, and conventional pure tone audiometry. The behavior observation audiometry, the child is seated between two loudspeakers and the audiologist delivers signal and notice the behavioral response of the child to sound. It is done up to six months of age. The visual reinforcement audiometry done within uh, with six months of age up to three years, the child is seated between two loudspeakers and the audiologist delivers sound and notice the behavior response of the child and with the distractor toy. The play audiometry is very common in our clinics. The advanced audiological evaluation, ABR, which is auditory brainstem response and autoacoustic emission. First of all, what is an ABR? The auditory brainstem response is the representation of electrical activity generated by the acetylcholine nerve and the brainstem, a response to acoustic stimulation. The generators of ABR we have seven waves. The most common, uh, uh, the most common waves are the first five waves, and the most common one is wave five, which is the most important one. Wave 1 from the distal part of the S cranial nerve, wave 2 from the proximal part of the S nerve, wave 3 from the cochlear nuclei, wave 4 from the superior olive, and wave 5 from the lateral limoniscus or inferior colicus. This is the ABR waves. The five waves occur within 5 to 6 milliseconds of the, after the onset of the stimulus. These generators of ABR. The adult form of ABR within 24 months of age. The infant ABR, less waveform morphology and increased absolute and inner wave latencies. ABR used to, for threshold detection, for side of lesion localization. For it is a part of electrophysiological test battery for diagnosis of central auditory dissociative disorder. It is used in ultra-neurological diagnosis like CB angle tumor. It is used in hearing aid selection, hearing aid fitting, hearing aid evaluation using aided versus unaided ABR. It plays a role in cochlear implantation and electric ABR. It is used also in intraoperative monitoring of CB angle tumor surgery. And it is used in newborn hearing screening, which will be discussed in another tutorial, inshallah. ABR trace. This is a normal ABR trace. We can see here it is identifiable and repeatable ABR waves could be traced down to 30 decibel and HR reflecting normal hearing sensitivity in the frequency range 2 to 4 kHz when we are using click ABR. This is absent ABR waves, this is not ABR waves when in the maximal stimulation at 90 decibel and HL reflecting severe to profound hearing, hearing loss in the frequency range 2 to 4 kHz. In that case we have to do two things. The first one is to do a two impairs APR uh, uh, 500 hertz to evaluate the low frequency region of the cochlea. And the other thing to do uh, autoacoustic emissions, it may be a case of a deteriorating neuropathy spectrum disorder or a deteriorating synchrony. This is threshold estimation. Uh, this is an APR trace we can, we can find here. 
the ABR waves, I could defibrate an unbearable ABR waves could be traced down to 60 decibel and HO, reflecting moderate hearing loss in the frequency range 2 to 4 kHz when they are using a click ABR. We said it is a moderate and not a moderately severe hearing, so hearing loss as we do a correction factor 50 decibel and HO. Let's move on bone conduction ABR. A bone conduction ABR is a modification of an air conduction ABR testing. It is used in abnormalities in its external ear or the metal ear, metal atresia, mycosia, and it is used uh, to evaluate the sensor neural element to bypass the outer ear and the metal ear and stimulate directly the inner ear. ABR, bone ABR recording through transducer is used a bone vibrator P71 with a headband and headphone using a supra or a hairphone or insert phone. This is the electrode placement and the transducer used. I prefer to use handheld method for the bone vibrator for less artifacts and remove the uh, headband. And the other thing I prefer using the answer phone for the same issue. The answer phone less artifacts uh, than the conventional uh, super or phone TDS 39. The stimulus use click or top purse and the contralateral masking is completely important and the inner or attenuation is zero for the bone vibrator. What about the bone conduction ABR problems? Uh, it, it has no calibration standard and as we said the crossover or the inner or attenuation is zero which is essential to do a contralateral masking. The limited uh, output for the bone vibrator the maximum output is 60 decibel and HO. This is a bone ABR trial is that the latency is delayed. It is no more delay than the air conduction ABR within 0.5 millisecond. And other issue, the frequency range of the bone conduction ABR is different than the frequency range of the air conduction ABR as the bone conduction ABR frequency range around 1.5 kHz. Let's move on to the acoustic emission. This is a model to how the auto acoustic emission device works. The sound delivered to the air canal through the metal ear into the cochlea and return from the cochlea to the metal ear to be detected in the outer ear with the highly sensitive microphone in the tap of the auto acoustic emission device. We have two main groups of the auto acoustic emission spontaneous, which has no clinical significance, and evoke. The evoke auto acoustic emission are two main parts the transient evoke auto acoustic emission using a click stimulation and the distortion product auto acoustic emission using uh, two pure tons. The transient acoustic emission present when the hearing threshold below 35 decibel. It is fast and used in bar hearing screening. The distortion product autoacoustic emission we use two pure tones. It is present when the hearing threshold below 50 decibel. The autoacoustic emission generally is highly sensitive to metal ear pathology. Any metal ear pathology can affect the autoacoustic emission, like secreto diabetes media or tympanic membrane perforation. As we can see here, transitive autoacoustic emission pass, the, the, the signal to noise ratio is more than 3 decibel. You can see here. This is not passing autoacoustic emission transient, as the signal to noise ratio is less than 3 decibel. Thank you for watching. And see you later, inshallah, in the next video concerning neonatal hearing screening. Assalamu